Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Friends, this next chapter is known as Isaiah's Prayer. It is uh, unique to Isaiah, although there are certain aspects of it that sound similar to the prayers of David. Uh, This majestic prayer is only 12 verses. So listen now as I read Isaiah chapter 64. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down, and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to help those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father." We are the clay, you're the potter. We are all the work of your hands. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. Your sacred cities have become a wasteland. Even Zion is a wasteland. Jerusalem, a desolation. Our holy and glorious temple, where our ancestors praised you, has been burned with fire. And all that we treasured lies in ruins. After all of this, Lord, will you hold yourself back? Will you keep silent and punish us beyond measure? So this amazing prayer has been prayed by believers, both Jew and Gentile alike, down through the generations. This um, prayer was penned some 2,700, 2,800 years ago. But it begins with these words, O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, and that the mountains would tremble before you. This verse, friends, was reputed to be a catalyst for the Hebrides revival. Uh, the story goes that there was a man who prayed this prayer publicly, O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, and that the mountains would tremble before you. And at that point, the Lord's uh, Spirit manifested in a very tangible way for all who were in attendance. And from that, it spread, uh, becoming known now as the Hebrides Revival. What we know from the, the annals of church history was a powerful move of God sweeping people into the kingdom. It continues, verse 2, As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and to cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down, and the mountains trembled before you. Friends, this is a a look back to the Exodus account when the Lord came down on Mount Sinai, causing the mountains to tremble, and uh, the prophet Isaiah is praying again for that level of visitation. The next verse, verse 4, is echoed uh, in the New Testament in an unusual way. First, the verse from Isaiah Verse 4, since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. In the New Testament, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, however, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no mind has conceived. He adds um, uh, what no mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. And so this idea of Isaiah saying, nobody's ever seen a God like you. Um, There is no God besides you. 
Paul incorporates that into 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, talking about the things in eternity just ahead for us. Uh, verse 5 continues talking about um, how we don't deserve anything from God. You come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. And so once again, echoes of this in the New Testament. Uh, God is the potter, and we are the clay. Verse 7, no one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, and you're the potter. We all are the work of your hands. And so this um, this theme is visited again in the prophets in Jeremiah, and then, of course, it's reflected also in the New Testament. Finally, after 2,000 years of devastation, we have to ask the question, will the Lord continue to be silent? Isaiah's pleas will not go unanswered, and I personally believe that we're part of the generation that will see some of these scriptures come to pass. Verse 9, Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. Your sacred cities have become a wasteland. Even Zion is a wasteland. Jerusalem is a desolation. Our holy and glorious temple where our ancestors praised you has been burned with fire. And all that we treasured lies in ruins. After all of this, Lord, will you hold yourself back? Will you keep silent and punish us beyond measure? And friends, I've got to say that after all of this that has occurred to Jerusalem and Israel and the Jewish people, the Lord will not hold himself back. He will not stay silent forever. He will not punish them beyond measure. And Lord, like Isaiah, we pray, oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Come down, Lord. Although you are terrible and awesome to behold, Lord, we desire for you to come and make the nations quake once again before you. Make the mountains tremble before you. We too, Lord, long to tremble before you. We look forward to seeing you, Lord. No ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you. Lord, we're looking forward to being with you. Our minds cannot conceive the things that lie before us. But Lord, we pray, nevertheless, come quickly. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.